What are the evolutionary advantages behind learning a new language? Love the book. Um, I would say being able to communicate with people who speak that language is a... <laughs> oh, man. It's so good. I, mean, I so wish I was good at this. Right. Um, um, I don't actually remember... Um, Drew Schneidler, our research assistant and friend and former student, research assistant for the book, um, uh, said at some point, and I think we may have left it in as a, as a footnote in the book, I can't remember, um, said, you know, there's such a, such a push right now um, to um, get kids to be bilingual young because we know that there's this uh, critical period during which picking up a second language is much, much easier. Once you have a second, it's much easier to pick up a third, a fourth, a fifth, et cetera. And certainly it's one of the ways that I have long considered um, our parenting suboptimal is that we did not, you know, we, we tried ish, but neither of us ourselves having fluency in a second language, um, we did neither of our children are bilingual. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I, I certainly assumed before we had children that you know, at the point that we had children, we would do everything we could to, to make that happen. It didn't happen. And uh, Drew said, you know, what about the trade-offs? Like, no, n we never hear about the trade-offs. It's just, it's just promoted as obviously this is a good thing. Uh, and it seems like it's a good thing. It makes the world more accessible. It makes us all able to reach across more, more um, boundaries that seem unbreachable if we can communicate with people uh, with whom we don't share one language, but we do share a second. Um, but might it not make, you know, might that generalism make you maybe somehow a little bit less deep in your home language, in your native language? It's possible. Yeah, I don't discount the possibility that there are downsides. My guess is we're so far from the efficient frontier that the downsides don't manifest it's so much upside yeah that uh, you're just it's it's well worth it even though a, a very efficient system would reveal that of course it does have costs it can't not yeah um but yeah well, the advantages i would say are i would say it's an extension of the advantage of travel itself mm -hmm. right people who have never been anywhere else are in a much worse position to know what the world is. Yeah. Right. And Having for what they are, have, and yeah, what their right. home culture is, exactly. and everything about themselves. You have yeah. to you have to find those things out through interaction. And of course, those of us who have figured them out at least are in some position to know that we're limited because of all the cultures we haven't seen. But we can at least extrapolate to what might be there. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about language is the better you are at a language the better positioned you are to look through the eyes of somebody who speaks that language natively mm -hmm. and the more people whose eyes you can look through the better you understand what the human experience is but if all the eyes you look through well are people with whom you share a native language then of course you'll you can get a pretty good sense of you know what english speakers are mm -hmm. but it you know it, it has a it has a not only a limit but a bias yeah you're biased in the direction of uh things that people who speak that language which you know of course many of them will have shared history of one kind or another so it, it is it is profoundly limiting but i think it's basically an empathy limit 